Hello everyone and welcome to this, the latest episode of Book Time with Elvis with me, Mark. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for their good wishes in my last video after not feeling too great from the second uh, Moderna vaccine I received. Uh, thankfully, I am feeling much better. Um, so I was at work today, uh, back at school, which was nice. And of course, I've got my certificate, which I mentioned in the last video, which is also nice. Uh, also, I noticed uh, today I had 245 subscribers. I'm <clears throat> absolutely overwhelmed by that, to be honest. You know, starting from uh, zero. Well, I, I think maybe it was two because I'm pretty sure my mum and my sister both subscribed. Uh, so, you know, I, that's, uh, what, 244, 243 or so people uh, who subscribed uh, to my little channel. I'm really, really o over the moon about that. Thank you so much. Um, it, you know, it really makes, um, you know, it gives added motivation to keep going with these things, to think that, um, you know, people are actually watching and I guess enjoying uh, the content so far. So really, thanks again for that. And I guess, you know, if I get a little bit further, perhaps... I might try one of those Q&A sessions that I've seen other people doing, but um, we'll see. Maybe if we get to 300, or maybe 250, I don't know. Uh, but, you know, I'm quite open on this. So I'm not really sure what more I could, uh, could say about myself, but we'll see. Anyway, so today I have two little things uh, for you. One is uh, my participation in the Maybe Midrash um, theme of the month. Um... Actually, I didn't read up on any of the rules, so uh, you'll have to forgive me. You can uh, go to um, Jason at Old Blue's Chapter and Verse, Old Blue Chapter and Verse. I think I'll leave a link down below. Um, Steve Donahue, of course, is also running it, and a couple of other people. Um, I mentioned in a previous video that I was thinking of doing um, Karen Armstrong's book about God. I've changed my mind. Not due to any uh, negative uh, thing, really, because you know I have people with differing opinions telling me uh, that it might be uh, it might be a bit dry. Others saying it would be very interesting. Um, I will read it at some point, but I decided because I have other books on to read this month, and I'm still a little behind from last month, that I've chosen a couple of shorter books. Um, maybe I should announce where I sit in this in this whole thing. You know whether I'm religious or not. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I am an atheist, but I haven't always been so. I would say up until around the age of 22, 23, I had not like an official uh, belief in uh, in God and Christianity, but I did sometimes join the Christian groups at school, at boarding school when I was there, um, you know, and I was very interested in it, and I thought I could have gone that way, and then I didn't. I fell firmly into the... Um, atheist camp uh, but of course it doesn't mean that I don't respect those who have their own beliefs and you know I'm certainly not militant about my atheism um, and sometimes I'm, I have to say I'm a little bit I sometimes feel a little bit jealous because when I meet people of faith they seem so convinced so certain uh, they sometimes seem maybe happier in life but maybe that's just my own uh, way of looking at things but uh, you know I quite often meet Christian Christians, especially evangelical Christians, who are just very happy-go-lucky people, and um, you know, seem very confident in what they believe, and I, I envy that a little bit, if I'm honest. Anyway, the two I've chosen, and I am open to other suggestions as long as they're pretty short. The two I've chosen, one is called um, "Delighting in the Trinity," and it's an introduction to the Christian faith, and it's by Michael Reeves, who is an academic at, um, I think it's King's College London. I think so, might be Imperial, no. Uh, but um, yeah, this is a short book um, that gives an introduction to Christianity. I mean, I do know some, some, some things about it, of course, but I thought it would be very interesting to read, um, to read it in this, in this month. And that's my non-fiction um, selection. Uh, my fiction selection is one called The Liar's Gospel, by Naomi Alderman. And I've actually started that, and I'm into the second chapter, I believe. Uh, the book itself is divided into four chapters, and it's a kind of alternative look at the life of Christ, uh, told through his mother, uh, Judas Iscariot, Barabbas, I think, 
and um, and somebody else, but I can't remember. I'll, I'll get back to you on that uh, when I've got further into the book. Uh, the book is apparently quite controversial because Alderman herself is Jewish. And uh, when I was looking at it on, uh, sorry, that's not what's controversial, but because of the way the stance she takes um, in telling, in this retelling of, of the Christian story, uh, a lot of Christians took exception to the fact that she's Jewish, not a Christian, and talking about it. And uh, if you really want to see what I mean, go look it up on Goodreads and you'll see a ton of one stars and they are all from um, Christian people saying pretty much that, you know, oh, it's really well written, but... You know, um, what, is she, what right does she have to say such negative things and, and that kind of stuff? So I'm intrigued by that. And so far, it is pretty interesting, actually. Um, it's, yeah, it is very much a kind of alternative telling. Um, you know, for example, his mother, when she, she won't really talk about him um, to people, and she, she even calls him pretty much a, a terrorist or revolutionary. Um, and there were some haunting bits in it, like uh, she was talking about the screaming trees, and I can only think that she's alluding to, um, of course, the crucifixion and uh, the men being tied to the wood, so it looked like trees and they're screaming. Uh, and it's got some pretty graphic stuff in it. It begins with um, animal sacrifice at the temple in Jerusalem. Um, that's quite graphic as well, but uh, so far it is, it's good. Uh, I'm looking forward to that, uh, to getting through it. And as I say, I'm open uh, to any other suggestions as well. Um, I think I will stick this time around with Christianity, but I would like maybe in the future to explore um, Islam or, uh, or Judaism or Buddhism or anything really. Um, I, f I do find religion quite quite fascinating. And I must, uh, I must also mention, uh, I'm meant to be doing um, my first buddy read this month uh, with uh, actually I'm doing it with Summer from Cozy Reading with Quaker Cats and we decided we're going to give Stella Gibbons's uh, Cold Comfort Farm a go. Uh, it's a book that I've been wanting to read for a while it was on her TBR as well and we decided we'd try and read it together because I am uh, an absolute virgin when it comes to buddy reads I've never done one before. Um, I should have another one this month hopefully with Sina over at Beating uh, About the Books uh, with the interior of Chinatown, which unfortunately we didn't have time to get to last month. Uh, but you know, there's no hurry. I'm in this for the long term. I don't need to get everything out of the way uh, too quickly. So yeah, that's a little bit about what I wanted to talk about. And the next thing is my little book haul. Now I received these next three books you'll see uh, a couple of weeks ago, but I didn't want to uh, make a video so soon after the others and I was waiting for a couple of others to come. And if you remember one of my previous videos, I had a very nice um, book called The Madman's Library by Edward Brooke Hitching. And I really liked the way the book was done. These compendiums are really interesting. And uh, I looked back at his other books and I thought, well, I have to get them. So I did. And uh, the first one I can show you is this beautiful book called Sky Atlas. And what it is really is a compendium that shows um, the greatest map smiths and discoveries from the universe. Uh, it's very nice hardback, of course, with a lovely dust jacket. Has a very nice uh, um, cover there inside, and it kind of looks, I guess, at the history of um, celestial things. You can see inside the front cover there, and of course, there are a lot of uh, wonderful um, illustrations uh, and sky maps, and you know, things from history of. Uh, cosmology and that kind of stuff so yeah I mean these kind of books I probably won't read in like one sitting cover to cover I like to kind of dip in and out of them uh, the next book from him that I will show you is this one here called the Phantom Atlas and this is also a very lovely book it has a really nice uh, feeling cover to it and this is the greatest myths lies and blunders that appear on maps so I guess it's things like um, the, the you know, he, was it here there be dragons or something, is it? There be dragons here or here be dragons, uh, that kind of thing. And so it looks at, um, you know, different maps, how they were made and how, of course, they were made uh, badly. Uh, and, and again, it's like all the others uh, of his, they have, you know, a lot of very nice um, uh, you know, writing as well as illustrations. 
and that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, you can see, for example, these weird sea monsters on the inside cover there. And the last one of his that I got is this one, which is the Golden Atlas. See, there's a theme here. I do like my geography. And this looks at the greatest explorations, quests, and discoveries on the maps. And once again, of course, it is inlaid with beautiful old maps and uh, a lot of interesting information about how these early maps were made and the people who made them. So that would be very interesting as well. You can see, for example, the quite terrifying thing here of the, the original Wicker Man. So there you go. Not quite sure what that has to do with anything yet, but I'll let you know when I, when I know. And I believe in October he has another book coming out called The Devil's Atlas, and that might also be very interesting. If you watched my uh, last video, I think, I was talking a bit about some books I'd ordered uh, in which I had to pay uh, VAT because of Brexit uh, when they entered the European Union, and they're secondhand um, Folio Society books, and I've never owned any of them before. And I picked them up at a very nice price. I'm not sure they'd be everybody's cup of tea, though. Um, the first one I got is this lovely two-volume um, set here of the complete Savoy operas by Gilbert and Sullivan. And there's just like a nice introduction to them. And then it's literally um, the librettos or the stories of all of the operas by, or operettas, I should say, by uh, Gilbert and Sullivan. So it's lovely. Uh, I'm a big fan and have been since, uh, since I was quite young. And the last one, the other Folio Society book I got, is this lovely one here of Mozart. Because uh, if you know, at the moment I've been doing um, my Mozart marathon, where I'm trying to listen to a different opera by Mozart each week. It has a lovely uh, cover there. Both of these uh, editions are from the early 90s. And again, it has some, oh, I can't seem to hold it up properly, it has some nice um, engravings illustrations and obviously some music and stuff there so I'm very happy about those despite the extra costs surprise costs incurred it will make me think twice though about doing it in the future unfortunately because you know the books themselves aren't particularly cheap and then when you have to pay uh, a good fraction of that price again uh, both for delivery and taxes it is a shame but you know i'll have a birthday coming up in july and hopefully my family will come and visit and they might be able to somehow bring them in for me uh, and maybe uh, avoid that so we'll see super so thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video and to listen to me go on about a few things very excited about the buddy read and very excited about uh, maybe midrash as well uh, and certainly to see what other people are doing so thanks again. I wish you all uh, well. Hope you're all safe and sound. And yeah, stay healthy, everyone. See you soon. All the best. Bye.